Chemical Reactions, Part 1, Balancing. A chemical reaction is when one or more substances are converted into new substances. So that would be any chemical change can be represented by a chemical reaction. How do you know if a chemical reaction happened? Well, some of the evidence of chemical reaction is the evolution of a gas, the formation of a precipitate, which is a solid, the release or absorption of energy, a change in temperature or giving off of light, or a permanent color change. So these are the primary evidence, but you have to be a little bit careful. These are usually evidence of a chemical change, but sometimes one of these will happen with a physical change. For example, when water boils, bubbles form and a gas is evolved, but that's not because of a chemical reaction, it's because it was heated up and changed phase. So evolution of a gas when there was no energy added would be the evidence of a chemical reaction. Um, some physical changes absorb or release energy as well. Uh, mixtures will get hotter or colder just because of mixing. And sometimes a physical change will result in a color change, but usually it's not permanent or it's just sort of a blending of colors. Symbols used in chemical reactions. The first one is the arrow. So the arrow indicates um, it separates the reactants and the products. Um, it's like the equal sign in a math equation, and it's read as yields or produces. The plus um, separates the reactants from the other reactants. So if you have two reactants, they'll be separated by a plus. If you have two products, they'll be separated with a plus. If you see something written over the arrow, like a triangle, a triangle means heat is added, an element or a compound would be a catalyst, something that is used to speed up the reaction. NR, written instead of products, means there's no reaction. And then the S, L, G, and aqueous stand for solid, liquid, gas, or aqueous, meaning dissolved in water. Conservation of matter always applies with chemical reactions. So the number of atoms of the reactant have to equal the number of atoms on the product side. And so this brings us to the idea of balancing a reaction. So the point of balancing a reaction is to make sure you're not creating or destroying atoms. You start and end with the same atoms. So the steps for doing it are written here, and I'm going to show you with an example as we go through the steps. The first step is to write the reactants and products with the correct subscripts. This is often already done, and in our example problem, it is done. So the H has a subscript of 2 because hydrogen is diatomic. The O also, diatomic, has a subscript of 2. And the product water is written correctly as H2O. So our next step is to identify the atoms that are involved. Or if you have a polyatomic ion that doesn't change, you can treat that as a group. So in this case, we have hydrogen and oxygen. So I like to list these under the arrow, and we're going to kind of tabulate how many we have. Okay. <clears throat> and so now we'll consider each element. And, and the order usually isn't all that important. You can do any order. So we'll just start with the hydrogen. So over here, we have two hydrogens because of the two subscript. So I'm going to write a two here. And on the product side, we also have two hydrogens because of that two subscript. So the hydrogen is balanced. We have two reactant, two product side. Now we go to the oxygen. And on the reactant side, we have two oxygens, but on the product side, we only have one. And so that is not balanced. And so um, the only way we can fix this is by adding coefficients. Now the coefficient is the number in front of the compound. So I can't mess with the subscript. They're there because we built the molecules correctly. So all I can do is change the number in front. So if I have two on the reactant side, I've got to have two on the product side. The way I fix that 
is putting a 2 in front of the water. Okay, and so now instead of having 1, I have 2. But I've also changed something else because this 2 applies to the hydrogen as well. So when I put the 2 in front of water, yes, I have 2 oxygens, but now I also have 4 hydrogens because the 2 times the 2 gives me 4. So now I have to fix that as well, which I can do by putting a 2 in front of this hydrogen. So now that is also 4. Okay, And so now I have 4 hydrogens, 2 oxygens, and the equation is balanced. So that's the general steps. Um, the order usually doesn't matter. Sometimes if you leave oxygen and hydrogen to last, that helps, um, only because those are often in more than one molecule. So if you have an element showing up in more than one molecule on the product side or the reactant side, it's easier to leave that till last. And sometimes it's easiest to start with the most complicated molecule. But in general, the order doesn't matter that much. So let's look at some more examples, and I'll just go through these. And if you want to pause it right here and try these on your own and then turn it back on, that's a great idea. And then I'll go through how to balance all of these, okay? So the first one here, um, the elements we have are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, okay? Um, and those are all the elements. And so I'll just start with the carbon. Um, I have one carbon on this side, on the reactant side, and I have one carbon on the product side. So that's all good. And then I go to the hydrogens. I have four hydrogens on the reactant side, but I have two on the product side. So you can see the H4 versus the H2. And so rather than tally everything up, I like to fix it as I go. All right, so in order to fix that, I have four, so I need four over here. If I put it two in front of the water, then that gives me four. So now the hydrogen's good. And then I go to the oxygen on the reactant side, I have two. And I come over here, I've got two with the carbon dioxide. I also have two with the water because the two in front. So that gives me four oxygens over here. And so to make that balance, I've got to put a 2 in front of the O2. So now that is also 4. My 2 disappeared. Let me put it back there. All right. And so now that one is balanced. Um, let's go down to the next one. Um, and on this one, we have a polyatomic ion, SO4, that stays SO4. So I could balance it using sulfur and oxygen separately. And notice oxygen shows up in every single compound, so that's a little complicated. It simplifies it a bit if I treat SO4 as a group. If it stayed as a group, I can treat it as a group. So you don't have to do it that way. If you'd rather do the elements, that also works. But this is just a little trick that sometimes helps. So I have hydrogen. I have SO4, potassium, and oxygen. And then there's the hydrogen again. All right, so I'm not going to start with hydrogen. Um, maybe I'll start with the most complicated molecule, which is the K2SO4. So let's start with the K. So on this side, I have two potassiums. And over here, I have one. And so in order to fix that, I'm going to put a 2 in front of the KOH. So that gives me 2 on both sides. And then I look at the SO4. On the product side, I have one. And on the reactant side, I have one. So the SO4 is looking good. Um, let's go to the hydrogen next. So the hydrogen, I have two of them here, and I have two of them here. So that would make four on the reactant side. And on the product side, I only have these two. 
Okay, so 4 and 2, in order to make that balance, I want to put it 2 in front of the water. So that gives me 4 here. And um, now we'll go to the oxygen. And I'm not going to count the oxygens with SO4. So these four, I'm not going to count them. I've already counted them. So I'm just going to count these two right here. So I have two in the KOH. And then over here, again, not going to worry about those. But I'm going to count these. So that gives me two also. And so that's all balanced as well. Uh, then we go to CH4 plus Cl2. So the elements we have here are carbon, hydrogen, and chlorine. So this one I'm going to leave chlorine till last because it shows up in two of the molecules on the product side. So we'll start with the carbon. I have one on the reactant side, one on the product side. So that looks good. And then the hydrogen, I have four on the reactant side from this H4. And on the product side, I have just one with the HCl. So in order to fix that, I'm going to put a four in front of HCl. Hopefully you can see that's a four, so that changes that to a four. Okay, and now the chlorine, I have four here. And four here that makes eight on the reactant side on product side and then on the reactant side I just have two so I'm going to fix that by putting a four here so that gives me eight on that side as well so let's see we've got one carbon four hydrogens eight chlorines and so that's balanced okay next one down we have carbon hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. Okay, I'll go ahead and start with carbon. So I have one on the reactant side, one on the product side. So that looks good. I'm going to wait on the hydrogen. Let's save that. Let's do the nitrogen next. So I have one on the reactant side and two on the product side. Okay, so in order to fix that, because I have this N2 here, I'm going to put a 2 in front of this one. So now I have 2 on the product side. Um, but that changes my carbon as well. So now I have two carbons here. So let's put a 2 in front of carbon dioxide. So I can have 2. That's a 2. 2 carbon dioxide. Okay, so my carbon's good. My nitrogen's good. Let's go on to the hydrogen. So counting the hydrogen, I have this 2, and I have this 3 and this 2. So the 3 and the 2 add together. So I have 5 hydrogens in this compound. And the only reason they're written separately is to help you show, see the shape of the molecule. These 3 hydrogens are attached to the carbon, and these 2 are attached to the nitrogen. Uh, so it shows you where those hydrogens are. But together it's 5 times 2 gives us 10 hydrogens over here. And so with water, we just have 2. So um, we want to put 5 of these waters. So it was 2. Now it's, oh, no, it's not 5, it's 10. So now we have 10 on both sides. Okay, so that's the hydrogen. And now we go to the oxygen. Um, we, let's count them up. We have 2 times 2 is 4 plus 5. We have 9 oxygens over here. And we have 2 on this side. But that's a bit of a problem because we need 9 oxygens, but they come in pairs. They come in O2. So we can't really have an odd number. And so when you run into this problem, you need an odd number of oxygens. You either have to put a fraction in your equation, which sometimes people do, but I think for our purposes, let's stick with whole numbers. So what I'm going to do is double everything. So instead of 9, let's say we need 18. Okay, so that would mean we need 9 oxygens. But we're doubling everything. So here, instead of a 2, it's going to be a 4. And this, instead of a 2, it's going to be a 4. 
instead of a 5, it's going to be a 10. And instead of a 1, it's going to be a 2. So if you need an odd number of oxygens, double everything, and that'll get you your right numbers. So here's a whole bunch more to practice. So um, I'm not going to go through how to do all of these, but the next slide has the answers. So pause it here, try some of these problems, and um, then look at the answers when you're done. So here are the answers to those problems. 